Let's bring in Francois-Philippe Champagne, Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry, for some perspective. Francois-Philippe, thank you so much for joining us live from the auto show. Uh, your government has said and you have said that you won't be inking those same kind of deals, that those were more foundational in nature. What's the new strategy? How do you attract you know, the likes of Honda? First of all, thank you for having me. As you can see, there's a bit of a buzz here at uh, the auto show in Toronto. Canada is the big name in the auto industry. Uh, people have realized that you may have seen Bloomberg rank us first in the world now for the battery ecosystem. So what we've been able to achieve in the country is remarkable. It's a generational opportunity. And to your question about what are the next steps, well, I think the fact that now, like I said, the world has realized that uh, we have the talent, uh, we have the strong ecosystem, we have the critical minerals and proximity to the assembly line, the resources and the market, renewable energy and access to market. It makes Canada, you know, in a world where you see a lot of turbulence, uh, very stable, very predictable. And that's why you see not only the foundational investment, Volkswagen, Stellantis, Nordvolt, uh, GM and Ford, but now you're seeing others who want to complement the supply chain. And I think uh, what we're saying to the world now is that uh, Canada is about the most complete supply chain you can imagine if you want to build the EV car of the future. And that EV car uh, is not going to be electric, but it's going to be green. And therefore, I think this is uh, very interesting for companies. I can tell you the moment that Bloomberg uh, ranked Canada second and first in the world uh, for uh, the strength of our ecosystem, uh, the phone is ringing because people realize that Canada is the place to be. We own the podium. So I would say uh, it's a very good base to be able to attract future investment in the country. Even as you've said that the kind of um, money that was given to the likes of Stellantis and Volkswagen are not going to be the kind of dollars given this time, what kind of structures are you pursuing? Well, as you know, uh, the Canadian incentives were there to match the U.S. incentive. Mm -hmm. And as you know, under the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, there's a cliff uh, in 2023. So any factories you're looking uh, is basically starting production very close to that. I think that, you know, and, and by the way, we've never been uh, able to win on the money. Uh, we are next to the uh, country, which is the reserve currency of the world. So I can tell you, we never win on the money. We win on the fact that we have the most talented worker. Uh, we have the critical minerals. We have the renewable energy. And I think today companies understand that. And I can tell you, uh, with what's going on in the world, people look at Canada and say, you know, if I have to make an investment of that significance. I was talking to the CEO of one of the largest automakers, and he said, you know, Minister, what you've achieved in Canada, every country in the world is knocking on our door to replicate. But you seize the opportunity. You were right there at the right time. And because of these foundational investments, now people realize that this is the place to be. And I would say also that once they have started to build the ecosystem, uh, the kind of incentives that you needed to provide initially are different as you go forward. People are talking about phase two, but therefore they already have an install base in Canada. So I can tell you that uh, for, for me, uh, what we have achieved is going to be uh, providing opportunities uh, for growth for jobs, for careers, for generations to come. I can hear in, in what you're talking about, you know, you've always been very passionate about attracting investment to this country. It's, it's in this vein, I'd like to talk about the telecom sector. As you know, BCE, which is our parent company, laid off nearly 5,000 people last week and also announced that they would be halting some of their spending plans uh, for growth as they called federal, federal government policies unsupportive. We know Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, really pushed back against that. He called BCE's decision garbage. But as I'm, I'm wondering, from your perspective, as somebody who wants to see businesses spend in this country, hire in this country, what did you make of BCE's announcement? Well, very concerning. Uh, on one end, they were announcing profits. On the other end, uh, they were laying off people. So obviously it's of concern. And, and that's what we've expressed uh, loud and clear. And, and therefore, uh, you know, we always look at opportunities for workers. Uh, and we were very concerned about the decision. And, and, and I would say to link that decision with government policy, I'm not sure that you can make a link like that because in a way our job has always been that, and we've been very, very clear. It's always around affordability. It's around reliability of the network and it's also about competition. 
there is more competition in the sector. We brought a fourth national player. You see prices going down. Uh, you see investments needed in new technology. So there's a whole lot of factor uh, that have led to that decision. What? But obviously, when you see uh, these kind of job losses, it's tragic. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, we reacted strongly on that. Well, actually, Price and Bell and Rogers have both announced price increases that they plan to implement this year. And, and Bell, it seems like, is basically threatening not to build more in terms of infrastructure, citing the regulatory landscape. Well, I would say you have to look in, in, in totality because there's probably hundreds of plans in the country what you've seen in the news recently is some companies wanting to increase the price in one or two, a couple of the plan. Obviously, that's not going in the right direction, but I can assure you, Stats Canada is clear the trend is going in the right direction. But every time you see that, obviously, it gets uh, customer concern, and we're going to be continue to push for more information, more options for consumers. On the other end, uh, you know, the federal government has been a partner of choice, I would say, with the telecom companies when it comes to expanding the network. And I think that should be something that's been taken into account because taxpayers have been working uh, to expand uh, the network with the telcos. And that's why uh, we were disappointed, obviously, uh, to see these job losses. And, uh, you know, we're gonna continue to push. Uh, one thing that I think uh, Corporate Canada know is that I will, I will always be on the side of, of more competition of the country uh, and, and more options for consumers. On the other hand, I'd say also Canada is one of the most attractive places. I mean, let's not lose in perspective. Last year, we attracted the largest investment in Dow's history uh, in Fort Saskatchewan, $12 billion. Uh, on the same year, BHP, the largest mining company, made uh, the largest investment. It's 135 years history or so about uh, $21 billion on phase one and two in Saskatchewan. I would say that if you look at, at the record investment we had last year and what we're seeing coming, uh, Canada is the destination of choice. That's what I hear from global CEOs, because you know what? When you have Dow, which is making their largest investment in their history, and BHP, which is doubling down on phase one and two now, putting $21 billion in Saskatchewan, there must be something working very well in this country. That's why I'm so optimistic. Uh, you know, people see uh, the fundamentals in Canada to be a leader in the economy of the 21st century. Well, there's, there's certain sectors like that, perhaps, uh, that are getting uh, the benefit of that, but certainly in areas like the energy sector, the executives have often lamented about the lack of foreign interest, despite, you know, elevated oil prices and, and pretty efficient production. Well, like I said, global CEOs have made the, their choice and they, they speak with their investment. Rio Tinto, uh, the largest smelter, uh, outside of China will be in Canada, uh, the first one being built since the one in Iceland 15 years ago. Uh, like I said, you had Dow Chemical, which choose to make its largest investment in its history in Canada, BHP. Uh, you had the likes of uh, now LG, uh, POSCO, uh, which have entered the ecosystem on batteries. I must say, uh, you have a lot of foreign players who have decided that Canada is the place to be. And like I said, the tribute is to the workers. Uh, the tribute is to what we have built in terms of the ecosystem in aerospace, biomanufacturing, natural resources, the auto industry, uh, the fact that we have renewable energy. I think the renewable energy and the talent is probably the two pieces that come most of the time. People want to decarbonize uh, their industry in steel, aluminum, in batteries, and that gives Canada the edge. And like I said, you don't need to take it from me. Uh, take it from Bloomberg or just look at the investments that have been uh, coming on our shore. I think the story is pretty clear that uh, people, when they have a choice, they choose Canada. You, you express, d express disappointment in, in some of the actions by the telecoms, whether it's Rogers raising prices as well as Bell or BCE and, and its layoffs. And I'm wondering, is there anything actionable that comes out of that that the government might be seeking? Well, the policy directive that we put uh, as, as that impact, you know, I changed uh, the policy directive to the CRTC, which put consumer uh, first, uh, competition first. Uh, you know, so obviously this has impact on the market. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, the three cornerstone that we have always said, more competition, better prices, reliability, were front and center into the policy. And, uh, you know, we're still going to see uh, actions. Uh, we're looking at what's going on in the market, but you've seen me, whether it's on the grocery sector, mm -hmm. uh, always been pushing for more competition, more choice and options for consumers, because at the end of the day, you know, the power comes from consumers. Consumers can choose uh, to uh, put their dollar 
in one company or the other in, time, in terms of buying services. So that's why we're still going to be pushing for more option, and that's going to help to stabilize prices. 